Jamai, but a die he curse on Maur, he is gus, and give it in session. Gentan e Dravod Koidui, Genesley Thol e Gumri, Aki Clewet, a Savbuinche, Christiane, a Hesia he. Good morning to you all. My name is Chris, Chris Jones. Welcome to you all to the first day and the first session of this very special event on the National Forest for Wales, and to hear your views, your voices. Now, this is the first of six similar sessions that you can join over the course of the next three days. And uh, from the registration details that I've seen, we do have a very wide range of people from all fields in this virtual room. I'll be doing a lot of that today, I think. Adiach i chigid am gofrestri a gwthgwrs fi'n a gyfle i bawb gyfrani yn y ddwy aeth yn y gymraeg a consistai gwthgwrs. Felly, as um, a silly black one song, I think, what's it all about? Well, when I go to the patrol, let's all listen to this short film to give us an idea of why we're here today. I'm not sure if it's the same film we've just seen, Adam. Man, a version of the and then the English version as well. So let's have a quick look at this. Yng Nghymru, mae gennym gynlluniau uchel geisiol i greu coedwig genedlaethol a fydd yn rhedeg ar ledled o wlad trwy ecosystem gysylltiedig o goetiroedd hynafol a rhai newydd. Bydd y goedwig genedlaethol i Gymru yn perthyn i bob un ohonom, ac o fydd un i gyd. Ein un ni fydd hi'w chreu, ein un ni fydd hi'w meithryn, ein un ni fydd hi'w choleddu am flynyddoedd i ddod. Bydd yn amddiffyn ein gwlad ac yn rhoi ffordd fwy cynaliadwy o fyw a gyfer cenedlaethau'r dyfodol. Dyma'ch coedwig genedlaethol, byddwch yn rhan ohono. In Wales, we have ambitious plans to create a national forest which will run the length and breadth of the country through a connected ecosystem of ancient and new woodlands. The National Forest for Wales will belong to and benefit us all. It will be ours to create. It will be ours to cultivate. It will be ours to cherish for years to come. It will protect our country and provide a more sustainable way of life for our future generations. This is your National Forest. Be part of it. So, uh, I'm sure that most of you are aware that the First Minister, Mark Drakeford, of course, announced his intention to develop a National Forest for Wales in his manifesto commitments in 2018. And 12th of March 2020, it seems such a long time ago, the, the First Minister officially launched the National Forest Programme. A felly, mae'n addas iawn yn bod i'n cael croeso arbennig i'r trydiau nes yma gan y dyn i hun. It gives me great pleasure to introduce this very special opening keynote address pre-recorded by the First Minister himself, Prif Gwynid o Cymru, Mr Mark Drakeford. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. It gives me great pleasure to be with you today and to celebrate this important milestone in the creation of our new National Forest for Wales. It's been wonderful to hear and to read about the huge amount of work that has gone into making today happen, to see the idea of a National Forest develop, and in particular, to see the enthusiasm it has helped to spark right across our country. Today, we mark not only an important step along the path to our ambition, but in doing so, showcase what is, I feel, a shared desire across our nation to protect our natural environment, to reverse the decline in our biodiversity, and to take bold and radical actions necessary to tackle the climate crisis. Coronavirus has reinforced for us all just how fragile and how critical our natural environment really is. Now, I see the creation of our National Forest for Wales as an important statement of our commitment to a sustainable future and to a future for generations who depend upon it. In June of last year, we launched our Community Woodland Scheme in collaboration with the National Notary Heritage Fund. That project provides a valuable opportunity for people in Wales to create and restore woodlands 
in their own communities. I'm very pleased to say that four projects have been awarding funding so far. I'm really keen to urge everyone to see what they can do to submit a bid before it closes in March next year. These projects can be a platform upon which our national forest can build to provide people and communities across Wales with the opportunity to be close to and to connect with the fantastic natural environment we have wherever people live in Wales. Over the last year, we have worked in partnership with Keep Wales Tidy to trial a number of tiny forests, small, quick growing and biodiverse areas. And it's great to say that the first five tiny forests have already been planted across Wales. And together with Keep Wales Tidy, we have also helped start 22 school forests in different parts of Wales, one in every local authority. These provide new and invaluable opportunities for children and young people to learn and enjoy our amazing natural environment. Now here in Wales, we're committed to increasing the amount of woodland, to ensuring the right trees are planted in the right places and to unlocking their full potential. Creating a national forest for Wales is a hugely ambitious programme and it will take time to complete. In the short term, I am keen that we make the most of the great woodlands we already have here in Wales. Many of these woodlands offer world leading mountain bug trails, accessible walking routes and a range of other recreational and tourism attractions. That is why last year we designated the first 14 national forest sites, exemplary woodlands on the Welsh Government Woodland Estate. I'm aware the interest this announcement has created, leading others to have their woodlands included as part of the national forest. That's why I'm pleased to announce today a new demonstrator project to increase the number of exemplar national forest sites we have across Wales. It will extend the opportunity for national forest status beyond the Welsh Government's woodland estate, in turn recognising the time, the effort and the enthusiasm so many people put into managing our fantastic woodlands. We will look for exemplar woodlands already capable of demonstrating the national forest outcomes, but also look at future potential too. That is why a second element of this project will be to make funding available that can improve woodlands to national forest standard in the future. That will include funding for new woodland areas and our intention is to launch both elements of the scheme for applications in the early summer of this year. In preparing for it, I hope you will all consider whether your woodland could already be a national forest woodland or could be in the future with our support. I hope it's evident today that despite the challenges of coronavirus, we have made excellent progress in laying the foundations of our ambition for a national forest for Wales. Thank you to everyone who has been involved so far and those who have engaged with this really exciting opportunity in making it happen. I look forward very much to hearing over the course of the next three days about your thoughts and hopes for the national forest and how in Wales we can translate that ambition and commitment into reality and in doing so to help turn Wales into a more prosperous, a more equal and a greener nature for future generations. Diolchen fawr iawn i chi gyd. Diolchen fawr iawn i chi, Mr Drakeford, thank you so much. Felly, 
space seed on Blean any dros a trigia nesa. What's in store for us? Well, quite a bit actually. The um, aim of the event over the next three days is actually twofold. To focus on the views of the people of Wales on the development of the national forest. So that's you, the people. And secondly, of course, exploring the benefits of woodlands and trees for all, demonstrating how valuable trees actually are from a social, economic and environmental perspective. And so over the course of the three days, we've got themed sessions lined up, focusing on these benefits. And funny enough, they're actually called Trees and Communities, which we're concentrating on today, Trees and the Economy, and Trees for the Environment. Now, all three will be delivered twice during the course of the event and at different times to enable as many as possible to have access to them. In addition to these sessions, there'll be an opportunity on this first day for you to join an informal networking workshop, which will be run by uh, Dr. Glenda Jones, one of our facilitators, and that will start at 1 p.m. So we will try our best to finish this morning by 12.30. Now, for each of the sessions, bear with me, there are three parts, okay? Part one, Tran In, which is where we are now, of course, an information sharing session, with updates on Welsh Government policy and showcase items, which we will be using this Zoom webinar link, the he session Rhani Gwybodeth ar newyddion diwadara ynglyn ar project. Part two, Rhan Dai, will be a discussion session, and we'll be accessing that through a Zoom meeting link that you'll all receive in the breakout conversation room as part of Eventbox. I'm sure, well, I hope you're all familiar with Eventbox um, by now. It's a very, very, easy platform, uh, as I say, that will be all part of the event box. And part three, Tran Tree, well, it's a panel Q&A, which I'll be facilitating when we reconvene here in the webinar in the main events box room. I'm hoping that you'll have some questions for the panels, for our distinguished guests, and please use the Q&A facility here on Zoom as much as you can. I'm sure you're all familiar, well, most of you are familiar with, with Zoom by now, but he is session Holly Akateb a trade. A kirkus mana we bodeth amen shalad. We're neither biographies of the contributors and synopses of their various sessions in the showcase rooms, and there's also a room about the networking session and the QA room where you can find biographies of your panelists. So feel free to browse these rooms on Eventbox when you can. Now, Eventbox, as I said, it's a superb platform and it's very easy to navigate. However, if you do need support regarding any of this, so if you get stuck somewhere, please don't be embarrassed, don't be shy, don't delay. Go to the lobby of Eventbox, you'll see the word lobby, and email info at eventbox.wales. So that's info at eventbox.wales. And box, of course, is B-O-C-S, and a form of Gymraeg. Adam uh, is our resident technical expert. He's a bit of a genius. And if he can't help you, well, no one can. So a top tip, it's important to keep the event box and the Zoom open at the same time. Don't close either. So that will, as a top tip for you. Right, um, we do have a lot to get through. I'll try my best to, to keep to the strict timings people have been asking for. Now, Kimbo here, namely Rando, are three projects, similar to Sunil Bachini or Vatha Wife, see Minimum Line, are Hino Breed. Soon we'll have today's three showcases for you, and they'll illustrate work that's currently happening. But firstly, and Gunta, let's turn to Welsh Government and a member of the National Forest Team to give us an overview of developments so far. The Please welcome the head of the National Forest Program. I can see you there, ready at Welsh Government, Erica Erica Dawson Davis. Erica. Welcome to everybody and welcome to this event. It's um. It's been a long time coming and um, I'm so pleased that we're able to talk to you all today. Um, I'm going to give you a very, very quick overview of where we're up to with the National Forest um, and next steps. So uh, if I could have the next slide, please, Adam. Um, as, as we've already alluded to, the First Minister launched the programme for the National Forest almost a year ago, 12th of March last year. We launched it at the Brunei site, the Welsh Woodland Trust Brunei site um, in Neath. Um, and the, at, the point, at that point, we explained the National Forest um, and the ambition of the National Forest, and that it extends the length and breadth of Wales, and it can provide many opportunities by planting, growing, and protecting trees 
contributing to the decarbonisation goals and the climate change emergency, halting the decline of biodiversity and improving the health and well-being of our people while supporting commercial business activity. Next slide, Adam, please. So what is the National Forest? On a local level, it's about woodlands for people, nature and commercial opportunities. It's about new and existing woodlands in urban and rural locations and in public and private ownership. On a regional level, it's spread across Wales and it's gonna be outcomes-based rather than a geographic spatially based programme. On a national level, it's an umbrella and a catalyst for woodland creation and better management um, of, of woodland um, and potentially encompasses all woodlands if they meet the outcomes. It's a long-term program, as, as was alluded to, uh, with multi-level benefits and multi-generational outcomes. And you could liken it to the Wales Coastal Path. And on a global level, it's a brand and it's an asset for Wales. Um, and it can be used as a tourist des tourism destination. And also it can help to support re reaching our net zero emissions target. Um, next slide, please, Adam. So as part of the National Forest for Wales, we, um, we have been working with the National Library of Wales and the National Museum of Wales and the Royal Commission for Ancient and Historic Monuments. Um, and what we've been doing is setting up a people's collection. And I'm pleased to announce today that we are launching the people's connection on um, the people's collection website. And you can see the link to the website there and what we're aiming to do is collect everybody's memories, poetry, pictures, photo photography, video, um, anything across Wales of your favourite trees, of what trees mean to you um, and create basically a living time capsule to, to accompany the National Forest to chart its progress and to chart its growth and we would really really love that, um, that you all submit something or um, community groups, schools, um, youth groups, um, really, really, if you could have a think and get together and put together some, um, some content and post it up to that site um, and we can then um, upload it for everybody and we can have that living time capsule um, and just looking at all of the amazing woodlands we already have in Wales. Next slide please Adam. So I mentioned the outcomes of the National Forest um, and how we were going to be looking at how um, woodlands meet the National Forest standards and outcomes. We've pulled together with help of all our stakeholders, six outcomes, um, connected woodlands, dynamic multipurpose woodlands and trees, woodlands that demonstrate learning, research and innovation, community involvement in woodlands, woodlands that are accessible to people and good quality, well designed and managed resilient woodlands. They um, are interchangeable and they're not all need to be demonstrated to a great extent in every woodland. However, they would be what designates the example of sites. Next slide, slide please, Adam. So the exemplar sites, as the First Minister alluded to, were launched uh, at Climate Week by the Minister for Environment and Rural um, Affairs. The sites on the existing Welsh Government woodland estate, right across Wales, you could see here, they're the initial sites um, and as we have announced today and the First Minister announced in his keynote speech, we will be looking at a scheme to encourage everybody to apply to see if their woodland sites um, meet the outcomes and meet the exemplars. Next slide please Adam. One thing um, that I will be talking about in greater detail in our session tonight will be how the um, National Forest is arranged or organised. Um, the, the next three slides I'm going to show you aren't maps of where the National Forests are going. They're ideas, they're very, very high level ideas and they're principles of how we could organise the National Forest. And I'm quickly going to run through them now and there is more time to talk about this later on in our evening session tonight. So the first one is a very, very simple, it could go any way, shape or form, um, um, straight across Wales from, from south to north, north to south. Um, it's a woodland trail across Wales. Number two, next slide please Adam. Number two is more of a circuit of Wales and it encompasses all the exemplar sites 
ancient woodland that we already have um, and it's more of a circuitry route and um, on the map we've also got things like railway lines and um, we have coastal areas as well so bringing in the coastal path more into a terrestrial um, woodland path um, as I said I will discuss these in more detail so I, I put through a quick snapshot um, on there we also have the marine A and OBs and we have um, specific um, areas of uh, interest as well. It's just different ways, as I say, in principle, we can organise the National Forest and we would like to talk to everybody about these. Next slide, please, Adam. The third one is based on a hub and spoke um, system. So this one actually uh, is looking at the area statements that have been um, designed in the five area statement areas plus the marine area statement, looking at using the area statements as a hub or using existing exemplar sites as a hub and then communities bringing forward um, on a place-based approach their ideas to connect the national forest right across Wales so this is more of a hub and spoke approach um, so they're the three ideas um, that we have at the moment as I say they're not set in stone they're they really are just ideas uh, to begin discussions today and across the next couple of days so the next steps for the National Forest, um, content for the people's collection. So um, as I say, uh, any ideas, any photography, any video, um, poetry, writings, narratives, um, artworks, um, please uh, work with your communities and, and, and there is a, a portal to, to upload those onto. Uh, the Community Woodland Scheme is available until March 22. The new National Forest Demonstrator that the First Minister has announced today, more information will be coming on that over the next few months. Um, and we're planning to go out to consultation this winter on all of the things that we've discussed today, um, looking at, as I say, the organisational principles, the delivery and funding um, mechanisms, and there will be more events. This is the first. So these are the first events, um, and there will be more and more of these um, in all different formats and different ways. So. We're trying the digital way. I hope you like it and please feel free to feed in at the end when you receive your evaluation sheets on how, how you found this approach. Um, really grateful for everybody's time today and please feel free to post questions in the chat bar. Jochen Bauer, thank you, Chris. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So this morning is actually being recorded. Um, I'm not quite quite sure where it's going to be available to look at after today. Can someone let me know, please, in the chat button where exactly it will be available to look at? Someone's already asked um, if it's been recorded. I do know that the breakout rooms will not be recorded, but everything else is, as it were. So there'll be an opportunity to ask uh, Erica your questions later on as part of the Q&A session. And I'm very pleased to say we've already have had a couple of uh, questions in Erica so uh, get ready for that later on okay so as I said we'd like to ask our three special guests this morning to present their individual showcases and Gunta first we have Maria Wilding from Heis Goidwig now Maria is the Heis Goidwig program manager and brings together the staff and the board of Heis Goidwig to support the growing number of community groups across Wales dedicated to managing their local woodlands. And she spent the last 20 years working with community woodland groups and initiatives and supporting social enterprise development across the UK. So Maria, I hope you're there. I believe your presentation is called Voice from Wales Community Woodlands. Over to you, Maria. Hello, good morning, everybody. Borodar Pau. I feel like a cuckoo in the nest because I'm not actually Maria. <laughs> I feel like I've taken on her persona. Um, my name is Liz and my colleague Maria and I will be joint presenting um, this morning. Thank you, Chris, for the very illustrious um, introduction to us. <laughs> I didn't do any of that training. I feel fantastic. Um, I, as, I, as Chris uh, very kindly introduced us, we'll be talking a little bit about our organisation, which is Fleisa uh, Goidwig, the voice of community woodlands in Wales. Uh, next slide, please, Adam. So I'm not sure how many of you understand or know about community woodlands. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about what community woodlands are and what they have to offer the, um, the woodlands and the communities of Wales. And then my colleague Maria will be talking a little bit about the organisation and what we're working on at the moment. 
So as you can see from this slide, community woodlands come in all shapes and all sizes, and they have interests in a vast uh, number of uh, environmental and social uh, interests. Next slide, please. So what is a community woodland? Well, a community woodland is a woodland that, as it is, sounds, is deeply linked to the community around it. And that could mean very many outcomes. That could be um, a woodland for dog walking and health and well-being. It could be a woodland that uses uh, the resources of the wood, like timber for firewood, for example, or for training or for green woodworking. It could be an educational site which concentrates on forest schools or upskilling members of the community, both retired, both young and both like I am middle aged. Um, and especially and the educational sites, as we've seen over the past 12 months within Woodlands are in particularly important now that Wales opens up again post COVID. Uh, it could be a woodland that's used for um, livelihoods. So we have community woodlands that are working, um, that are supplying timber for trade. As you can see down at the bottom, that is, uh, that is a woodland up in um, North Wales, Abergelly, which is uh, um, Elby Working Woods, or it could be a site that uses pea sticks for um, growing, or it could be a tree nursery site. Next slide, please. Um, so a community woodland is also a wood that is for people and nature. We need to remember, um, especially in these times, that woodlands have attracted maybe 100, 150% more footfall over the last 12 months um, than usual. And these woodlands are incredibly beneficial, not just for the volunteers and also not just for um, people exploring their nearest um, outdoor sites, but also for the benefits of wildlife. So community woodlands are often volunteer led. Um, they can do management, uh, they can do management of the woodlands, they can do things like thinning, they work to a woodland management plan, they engage in observations um, and biodiversity audits and improvements, so they will undertake things like INNS clearance, so that to everybody is bracken bashing or um, roadie clearances, and they're able to do time, time sensitive sustainable management, so they can also do things like um, bird audits and bat audits. And we have to remember that the great majority of the community woodlands across Wales are green flag sites. So a community woodland is also a woodland that um, where the community has some degree of control over the woodland um, and how it's managed or run. And this differs slightly from uh, volunteer groups who may be working on a site that is owned by a council or an environmental organisation and they do things like volunteer days. A community woodland has a more, um, has a more stringent tenure. Uh, only a few community woodlands across Wales actually own their own sites. Most have woodland management agreements with other landowners, for example, community councils or councils, NRW, uh, the Woodland Trust, the National Trust, and most recently an agreement with the Trunk Road, Trunk Road Agency. And also woodland, uh, community woodlands will have agreements with private landowners. Um, we're very excited to explore other opportunities with perhaps commercial, perhaps commercial organisations who are looking for um, social corporate social responsibility or sites that perhaps have been neglected in the past and they want to explore working with communities. This could also be sites like Public Health Wales, GP sites behind the back of your library. Um, basically, a community woodland is, uh, is a community where they are able to take decisions and what happens on their woodland is really key to that agreement. You can see here that our communities are, are, are right across Wales, a bit like the, um, the national forest map <laughs> without, the, without the, and they are connected, they're connected through the network. We have 90 plus four members, um, 350 associate members, and we've never really been busier. Um, we have two funded programmes, one is the Enroll funded programme through the um, Welsh Government, and the other is through RDP funding. That's called Dewis Gwyth, and that is looking at supply chain feasibility from non-timber forest products in woodlands. So that's things like birch sapping and wild garlic. Um, the Welsh Government funding has enabled us to provide on-the-ground support from six regional development officers, and we're working directly with existing members 
new members and also landowners and new community groups across Wales. And we're really pleased that two of our community woodland group members have already been recognised in the first tranche of National Forest Exemplar sites. That's Climby Valley and Guidebont. So the community woodlands have multiple benefits, as I've mentioned before. Um, they're really dedicated and hardworking and they're inspirational lot of the groups, as you'll see later when we play our film, which is the Voices of Woodlands. Um, they meet some of the Wellbeing uh, for Future Generations Act's goals. We also hit a lot of the priorities for the National Forest Programme, as I think I've highlighted. And well-managed woodlands have benefits for everyone. They have benefits for the environment, for climate change, especially tree planting, which has never been, never been more popular. Um, they're improving a local asset for the people of Wales. And most importantly, they're connecting the people with the outdoors, which as we move into a new, a new beginning really, um, post COVID, um, moving into the outdoors is more important than ever. I'm going to now hand over to the real Maria, who's going to talk about Tlaisagoid uh, and our organization. Thank you. Hello, sorry about that, double act here. Um, next slide, please, Adam. So yeah, as Liz mentioned, I'm just going to um, tell you a little bit about what Tlaisagoid is and what we do. So Tlaisagoid was founded with two simple aims. We're a network organization um, formed in 2009 by community woodlands to support community woodland groups. And we still um, operate on that ethos. We are managed by a volunteer board of directors who are taken from the groups themselves. And our future direction, what we do is all predicated on what groups tell us they need. So our two simple aims are to promote and represent community woodland groups in Wales and to provide assistance and support to local community groups and initiatives. Next slide, please, Adam. Okay, so what do we do? We um, provide support networking among community woodland groups and other agencies, helping groups to share their knowledge and experience in problem solving. Um, if, if, one, if one community woodland group has a question or a problem in one part of Wales, you guarantee that at least another four or five groups will have had exactly the same problem and be able to share their knowledge and experience of how they've come through it. Um, next slide, please. We also provide um, networking events, um, usually, well, in the past, previous to this year, face-to-face um, -face regional events and national events, where um, the past year we've been doing more and more online stuff. And I think what going forward, we'll probably end up doing a little bit of a mixture of both. And we provide resources, we develop resources to help community wooden groups and public bodies and partners. So um, as Liz mentioned, one of the resources that we're providing at the moment is development officers, officers on the ground who provide support to people, um, to, to the people and the community from existing groups, but also those wanting to start up new groups. And um, one of the things that our development officers have been doing, um, concentrating on in the past year, is helping groups to apply for um, the National Forest Community Woodland Funding that's run by the, the National Lottery that um, I think you're going to be hearing a, a presentation on in a bit. Um, and I think it's, it's very important for our communities to be involved in the National Forest going forward and to be able to access some of that funding that's available. Next slide, please. Profile. Um, one of the things that we're not brilliant about, I think communities in general and community groups aren't is mm -hmm. shouting enough about what we do, but we attempt to raise the profile of community woodlands within the wider woodland community with the general public. We, when possible, we always have a stand at the Royal Welsh in the Ice Tedford um, as part of the woodland sector as a whole. We um, organise our own events and we sit on several um, kind of UK wide and Wales wide um, national groups to just basically to make sure that the community woodlands are a valued and important and integral part of the woodland sector as a whole and are recognised as such. Next slide, please. Dialogue. So as well as the networking and helping people have the communities to talk to each other and connect across, across the different parts of Wales, we also engage in dialogue with policymakers to um, ensure that when new policy is developed and new policy is written, then um, community woodlands are an important and integral aspect of that as well. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. Um, contact details there if you, if you need them. One of the things I did just want to say at the end is that despite the past year and the intermittent pauses to work in woodlands that um, with each successive lockdown have been caused, we've never been busier. Um, I think the desire and the need from communities of Wales to contribute to the climate to nature emergencies and to provide safe, accessible places for people to connect and to exercise and to experience nature has really shone through. And um, rather than Liz and I sit here and tell you about the amazing 
um, things that community woodlands do. We've put together a short film. This is just six of our groups from across Wales. It's part of a project that we're doing to collect more voices from community woodlands. So this is kind of phase one of our um, short videos. I'm Dave Williams and we're in Blind Brown Community Woodland which is on the outskirts of the town of Cumbran. It's a community wood of 100 acres with a mixture of deciduous trees, uh, mostly beech, um, but a mixture of oak and ash and uh, a lot of birch as well, plus uh, conifer from having been a former Forestry Commission plantation. As a community woodland our aim has been to open up this area so that anyone can come up here and enjoy themselves and uh, walking the dog, a bit of rest and recuperation, etc. We've got a number of projects we've done as a community woodland and one has been actually developing a community orchard area where we've got 60 apple trees. We've also created a pond and we maintain the tracks for anybody to be able to come and walk through the woodland as well as a few benches uh, keeping the perimeter fence clear etc. So all in all great place to be and uh, we've got about 120 members. Hi, my name's Jerry O'Keefe and I'm one of 13 directors of a community woodland project here in North Wales. Close to the villages of Marford and Gresford, the site is known as Miser Pant, which translates into the Hollow Field, which is an extremely apt name considering that the site is formerly an old quarry running to approximately 72 acres. We purchased the site in 2011 and originally planted up with Corsican pine We've engaged in an extensive programme over recent years whereby we're taking out the Corsican pine and replacing them with indigenous trees. And on that particular project we've engaged extensively with children and young people, their families and local schools. And it was one of the contributory factors to us receiving the Green Flag Award over recent years. The site is extremely popular with a good cross-section of the community. We have people of all abilities and disabilities. We've developed bike trails and the pump track and they are extremely popular with families also. In addition on site we also have a children's play area, we have an outdoor gym and we have pathways designed specifically for people of all abilities. Thank you very much indeed. My name's Melissa and I'm at Shin Park Mower, which is a community woodland on Anglesey. We manage 24 hectares of mostly Corsican pine, but also beech, alder, spruce, birch and willow. And in the past five years, we've planted thousands more native and non-native broadleaf and conifer trees. We have a large lake with a new beautiful bird hide, a wooden open-sided caban which is open to the public, used for educational events and training and available to hire. Chimpite Mayer also has a thriving red squirrel population who are fed regularly by our volunteers. We've received funding from the National Lottery, the WCVA, the Co-op and the Community Foundation in Wales. We manage the woodland with volunteers and usually hold woodland events all year round from forest school sessions and family events to fungi forays and we have a social history project on our website. Hello, I'm Rob Pratt. I'm at Glen Tower Riverside Park in Pontedawe. We sat in 25 acres of beautiful grassland and woodland and have been a green flag site now for around nine years. The site was primarily alder, willow and oak, but we planted many hundreds of trees and shrubs to form new hedgerows and woodland areas, so we now have a much greater variety. Uh, such, such things as hazel, rowan, crab apple uh, in hedges, and broadleaf trees such as beech, copper beech, hornbeam and chestnut. We've also planted an orchard with around 10 different apple varieties. We've got uh, open grassland areas that are left to grow over the summer 
uh, attracting bees and other insect life. We've opened to the public 24-7 and run an outdoor education centre uh, running intervention programme for primary and secondary schools five days a week. We also have a volunteer programme every Wednesday where we provide transferable woodland skills or we will have again when the lockdown is over. Come along please and spend some time with us, we'd be very pleased to see you. Hello, my name is Chris, Chair of Coy de Bont at Point of Guide, a community woodland with a management agreement with NRW of 24 hectares. This woodland connects people with nature, with volunteer sessions and relevant training. Our woodland has a variety of wildlife and habitats, with pine martins using as their territory and red squirrels a mile away. We provide a place where people can relax and enjoy outdoors. My name is Rod Waterfield. Welcome to the Warren Woods in Denbyshire, the home of the Woodland Skills Centre. Warren Woods is a 50 acre woodland right in the heart of the Caledian Range and Dee Valley area of outstanding natural beauty. The woodland is privately owned but it's entered into a long term lease with a social enterprise company called Warren Woods Limited that runs the Woodland Skills Centre. We have a heritage orchard, allotments, medicinal herb garden, vineyard, wildflower meadows, polytunnels, tree nursery, workshops. We run courses in traditional crafts that attract people from all over the UK, mainly woodland related, such as woodland management, chair making, stool making, but also blacksmithing, longbows, coracles, um, horticulture, lots of bushcraft courses and courses in mindfulness. We also have a big social prescribing programme working here on site with people of all ages, um, some with mental health problems, learning difficulties, physical disabilities, dementia. And we also work with children who've been excluded from school. As I alluded to earlier on, there is information about all our speakers, of course, and presenters, again, on the event box lobby page. There's all kinds of information on there. And again, keep those questions coming. Uh, we've had a few already. Yeah, and this fantastic. We hope to have plenty of questions for the, the Q&A later on, of course. And I can see that you're using the chat facility too, which is uh, superb. Right, let's move quickly on then, if we may. Nessa or Dur Cymru, Penaith Strategaeth Atyniadau Ymwelwyr, na chichion cake. Next, we have a showcase entitled Creating Hubs for Health and Wellbeing. I'd like to ask the Head of Visitor Attraction Strategy for Dual Cymru, Welsh Water, to Vicky, Vicky Martin. Are you there? Hello, Baradar. Um, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to showcase some of the amazing projects that Welsh Water, in partnership with local communities, has developed and is delivering across Wales. Um, as a business, we have a 2050 strategy, which includes a goal to become uh, a, an organization which uses its land holdings to maximize the well-being of its customers, supporting healthy lifestyles, biodiversity and ecosystems. So we've been on a mission to create hubs for health and well-being and working in partnership with local people and communities to connect the nature, connect them to the nature on their doorstep. Um, so over the next few slides, um, I'll be giving you a snapshot into some of the, the projects that we've developed uh, from our first ever community adoption at Swiss Valley, um, our inaugural friends group, which is being created at Lisbane and Clinician Reservoirs in Cardiff, and also a couple of mega projects where we're working with partners to deliver landscape um, scale action in Ellen Valley in mid Wales. Next slide, please. So our first ever community adoption um, is at Swiss Valley Reservoirs, 
and it's the a collaboration with Clinethley Rural Council. Um, it's the first of its kind and sees the community council adopting the woodlands that surround the reservoirs. So Welsh Water retains responsibility for maintaining the dam infrastructure, the water quality, um, but it actually empowers local people to get involved with looking after the, the nature that's on their doorstep. So together we created a shared vision and also a site management plan. And then working with Natural Resources Wales, Canoe Wales, um, we were able to access um, a significant grant from Welsh Government through the Access to Water programme. And this is enabling us to refurbish an abandoned toilet rock and bring it back into use to create um, accessible water sports infrastructure to give access to water for paddle sports for people of all abilities. It's also enabling us to put in washdown facilities to protect water quality and uh, for biosecurity. And Clinethley Rural Council has been working with volunteers from within the community who want to actually help care for their local beauty spot and improve biodiversity. They've also been working with Carmarthenshire Council who have invested in footpath improvements and are also setting up an outdoor activity classroom to support land and water based activities on site. Next slide please. Um, at Lisbane and Clinician Reservoirs in Cardiff, um, we um, have been working in partnership with the local reservoir action group who campaign to save the reservoirs from inappropriate development. Uh, we're also working with Cardiff Council and Cardiff and Vale Health Board um, through an annual partnership which we've developed, which has enabled us to access funding, again from Welsh Government, and this is allowing us to put in green infrastructure, so that's circular paths around the reservoirs to enable access. Uh, we're creating a conservation zone and also installing bird hides. Um, a big part of the annual project has been the development of a community engagement programme where we're working with a wide range of collaborators um, and local organisations uh, across a range of themes to develop signage and interpretation across the site, um, education and learning opportunities. Uh, we've also been working very closely with Cardiff Met University to develop the, the educational potential of the site. And volunteering is, is a big part of the community engagement program as well. So we've been supporting the creation of our first ever friends group, and that's in the process of being constituted at the moment. We, we launched the idea um, last summer, and a thrill to say that we've already had over 130 registrations of interest. So it has been a huge amount of support from the local community who want to get involved. We're also keen, um, once the site is open to the public, that um, the opportunities, whether it's water sports, uh, volunteering, um, would provide opportunities to support social prescribing as well uh, on site. Next slide, please. Um, we've also been able to secure funding um, through the National Heritage Lottery Fund and Welsh Government to fast track our plans to restore um, two of the woodlands at uh, the reservoir site in Cardiff uh, through the Community Woodland Project. Uh, and this is really enabling us to fast track the restoration of the woodlands and um, really restore the woodlands at a pace that we could have only ever dreamt of previously. Um, the, pro the, the grant is enabling us to develop a woodland management plan, so we've been working with the Wildlife Trust to develop uh, the woodland management plan, and we're also looking to uh, plant connecting hedgerows to improve interconnectivity, uh, remove invasive species, uh, put in new plantings, restore a historic fish pond, install bat and bird boxes, and also create paths in a nature trail. And another big element of the Community Woodland Project has been supporting the creation of the Friends Group, which is in the process of constituting. The idea being that the Friends Group will help us care for the woodlands into the future. So the grant is enabling us to pay for training and supervision of volunteers, the purchase of equipment and PPE. Also the development of informal learning opportunities. And we'll also be doing a young person consultation um, in collaboration with Play Wales as well. Next slide, please. And on to Allen Valley in Powys. Um, Welsh Water has been working in partnership with um, local and national um, partners uh, to deliver the Ellen Links Landscape Partnership. This partnership is led by Allen Valley Trust and uh, local partners, CARA, the Community Arts Organisation, uh, Tia Coid, 
um, and also Natural Resources Wales are, are part of that partnership. It's a, a massive five year project, um, which um, is a £3.3 million project with £1.7 million worth of support um, from the Heritage Lottery Fund. And through the project, we've been able to um, develop a landscape conservation action plan, which um, sees 26 different projects being delivered across sort of four key themes. Um, we're looking at, uh, we have um, projects that celebrate heritage, um, help people to enjoy Ellen, experience and education, developing volunteering, and also enhancing nature and wildlife. And um, as part of that theme, um, we've been able to preserve and improve two internationally important woodlands, and this is being done through thinning, things like bracken management and also additional planting. The project's creating volunteering opportunities for people to get involved in the conservation works, things like biodiversity surveys and also research. And our delivery partner, Tia Coid, um, is delivering a, a number of training courses and activities, everything from woodland management and bushcraft. And you can see a picture there of uh, their volunteers at work at Ellen. Um, next slide, please. And also at Allen, we have uh, another sort of mega project that we, we're playing a small part in. This is um, the Life Celtic Rainforest Project. And this is a partnership with RSPB Cymru, Natural Resources Wales, and also Snowdonia National Park. So in total, it's a, a £7 million life funded project, which spans the, the length and breadth of Wales. And um, Dal Cymru is supporting it through our biodiversity fund. And this is enabling us to um, develop a number of conservation based interventions within the Allen Valley Celtic rainforests. We've been tackling um, inns, uh, sort of invasive species like rhododendrons, and looking at ways that we can tackle the invasive species um, without impacting on water quality. So ensuring that the use of glyphosates um, um, don't drift into the, the water um, by using direct injection of eco plugs instead of spray um, to control, control the invasives. We've also been looking at thinning and removal of the non-native conifers help the recovery of ancient woodland sites and also working with the local farming communities to introduce sustainable grazing uh, into the woodlands. This is requiring sort of fencing off areas of the reservoir and providing alternative water supplies um, to the cattle in order to protect the water quality in the Ellen catchment area uh, from the risk of cryptosporidium bacterium. Um, the project also includes interactive school-based sessions and also field visits. Um, so this was really just a, a whistle stop tour of some of the, um, the most exciting projects that we have been developing and delivering in partnership with different communities across Wales. And I think it really does demonstrate what can be achieved by working in partnership with others, um, pooling resources and expertise, and how in doing, uh, in working in partnership, uh, it's been possible for us to, to access external funding to actually really help us make a different a difference and also to fast track um, our plans and ambitions for sites. Thank you. Vicky, thank you so much. Okay, uh, moving swiftly on, if we may, again, I'm looking at the clock here. Uh, the third showcase, is involving a wider range of people and presented by the Environmental Grants Programme Manager at the National Lottery Heritage Fund. And his name is Chris, Mr. Chris Hoyle. Chris. Good morning, Chris. Can I say only Bob? Good morning, welcome. So I'm Chris Hoyle. I'm currently managing um, two grant schemes actually on behalf of Welsh Government and the National Lottery Heritage Fund. So that's the Local Places for Nature and the Community Woodlands Scheme. And um, following on from what um, Maria and Liz at Slice of had to say, and with Vicky um, talking about one of the projects we funded at uh, Llanishan, I want to tell you a little bit about why the fund decided it wanted to be involved with the community woodland aspect of the National Forest. So um, for those of you who don't know, the National Lottery Heritage Fund is part of the National Lottery, uh, National Heritage Memorial Fund. Um, and we're a non-departmental governmental body responsible to the um, uh, Department of Culture, Media and Sport in London, uh, but we take directive from Welsh Government as well. And we distribute, uh, primarily we distribute funds by the National Lottery 
the national lottery scheme which as you're probably aware is currently licensed to camelot and that's responsible for giving us around um six million a week uh to distribute um across the uk so in 2019 um, as a fund we launched a new strategic funding framework and this contains three elements that i just want to mention today the first is that landscape and night nature is a priority for us in the period up to 2024 at least um, and we're also looking at heritage for all so we want inclusive heritage to be a feature of anything that we fund and we also strive to uh, develop new ways of working and investing in heritage, including um, pursuing new business opportunities. Now, I'm not going to bore you with about our strategic funding framework, but if you are interested, you can go to our website at um, heritagefund.org.uk uh, to see more about that. Uh, could I have the next slide, please, Chris? So um, in late 2019, a few months after launching our new funding framework, we were approached by Welsh Government to become involved in some of their environmental programmes. Now for us, that was a great opportunity for us to work more broadly to meet our land landscape and nature priority and to develop new ways of working. In fact, it was the first opportunity presented to the fund to form a new funding partnership and deliver money that wasn't wholly, wholly from the lottery. So primarily, this is a government capital fund, uh, but to make sure that there was some money, uh, revenue money available to grantees, the fund decided um, that uh, as we wanted to make natural heritage available to all, the fund would put some money in. So um, uh, the, we agreed to contribute £600,000 across the programme period. So that's 30% um, of, of the available funds for community woodlands uh, through our scheme. Now, that's quite important. It means both our own and the government funding go further in making the community woodland happen. And it means that we can have a higher level of engagement work um, and help to make that community woodland a reality. And to make sure that we as a fund fulfill our aim, our stated aim to involve a wider range of people in heritage. While government money is used to restore or create all of the physical elements that constitute a woodland, the tree planting, the connectivity, the nature and wildlife aspects, the scrapes, the ponds, and all the things that uh, Vicky mentioned that were going on at Llanishan. Um, we can also pay for revenue elements such as uh, recruitment, support, and training of volunteers. We can include um, some, uh, encourage people into the woodlands to explore, to learn and benefit from the natural world. And by facilitating these sorts of activities, we can help all our funded projects meet our mandatory outcome, which is to involve a wider range of people in heritage. Now, to make it simple, what the lottery fund has done is said we we have our nine outcomes. Uh, we only have one mandatory and actually we only want applicants to meet that one mandatory outcome. Of course, there are outputs required from the government perspective um, and every applicant must meet their agreed purposes as outlined in their grant award. Could I have slide three, please, Chris? Now, the strategic funding framework that we have isn't something that we just sat down and agreed amongst ourselves. It is based on extensive research amongst people who play the national lottery games. And what we found out that was that many people didn't realize where the good money, good causes money was going. And it was also clear that we needed to provide targeted help to higher priority applicants who are underrepresented in our funding. So part of our approach was to designate some areas um, as areas of focus. Um, these were areas that traditionally hadn't received their fair share of heritage lottery money. And in Wales, this includes um, Rhonda Cunnan Taff and Neath Port Talbot. And we're trying to ensure that there's some equity between where money is raised um, and where, where the lottery tickets are bought, I suppose. And we don't know that because that's commercially sensitive information and where the good causes, causes money is spent. So this applies to um, communities as well as geography. And we've developed some good practice guidance in a number of areas, including wellbeing and inclusion, so we can help our grant applicants reach groups that are underrepresented in nature and environment. 
So we do believe that everyone should have the opportunity to benefit from National Lottery Heritage Funding and that more inclusive heritage is more sustainable in the longer term. In short, we want to give more opportunities to people with protected characteristics, as well as those from lower incomes to get involved in heritage. We would say that there are three things uh, a wider range of people uh, will be involved with heritage can mean. And we encourage applicants to consider that they welcome everyone to take part, that they think about how they are welcoming a wider range of people whether it's digitally through website or social media activity, in marketing material or in person, and that they talk to people um, so that they are supported to become involved and identify what needs to be planned for and then budget for it and include it in their application. That they seek to tackle disadvantage that people with low incomes or a lack of previous experience can face in getting involved in heritage to try uh, to not offer unpaid internships. If you want to uh, offer an internship, then include it in your application and we'll fund it. To think about asking for transferable skills such as communication, budgeting, digital or great people skills instead of formal qualifications. And that local skills are important and discuss with local communities and network what skills and assets already exist such as community transport or dementia friendly cafes. And in their project, that their project meets people needs, meets people's needs where they are different to those of others. Um, and, and, our, and our advice goes further than this. So uh, you, you should really measure what's being done and you'll find further information on our website and look for the 10 ways to measure and prove that a wider range of people can be involved in heritage. And just to note that um, when people are putting their applications together, they can seek advice and support from the development officers at Slicer Goidwig as part of that process. And we'd encourage people to do that. Uh, if I could have slide four, please, Chris. Now, we're not saying that any of this may be easy or comfortable for some groups and that many may find it a challenge, especially where people think diverse communities are thin on the ground. But we would encourage uh, them to think about uh, the age of volunteers that they're attracting, their backgrounds, are young people well represented or is their cohort of volunteers only those that have retired from full time work? And we know that while many individuals from marginalised communities may choose to move to cities and towns, we also know that dementia and mental health concerns are no respecters of geography. Our aim is to try and assist in making a community woodland, a woodland for all of the community, wherever they are and whoever they are. I mentioned earlier that this grant scheme follows our usual processes and procedures. And it is, and it does, and it means that you'll get a quick turnaround on decisions. It's our aim to distribute this funding to applicants uh, with ideas that meet the grant criteria, of course. But my role and the role of my team is to help ensure that this grant scheme is spent, it's well spent and achieves the outcomes desired by both the government and the fund. And we are here to help. If I could have uh, slide five, please, Chris. And there we are, that's how you get in touch with us. I would encourage people to go to the website and look at the Community Woodlands guidance uh, contained there on our funding subpage. You can email us at natia uh, at heritagefund.org.uk and my phone number is there and we would welcome any inquiries. Diolch Good, Diolch Chris, Diolch um, So there's three valuable showcases there and all three, of course, Chris, Vicky, Maria, and of course, Erica, will be on the panel for your questions later on this morning and hopefully, well, hopefully just before midday. We'll see how it goes. And as I mentioned, all the showcases, biogs and the content for the Q&A, as well as photos and et cetera, are available on the event box um, lobby to peruse at your leisure. Try and make the most of it all. OK, now I'm hoping, uh, yeah, we have having some questions ready for the panelists. Don't forget to jot them down on the Q&A, of course. Uh, if you do have any questions that might not be answered today or you want to go a little bit deeper if you like that, then please feel free to email the national forest address and they will be uh, addressed um in time to obviously excuse that national forest wales at gov.wales national forest wales at gov.wales 
Nein Gerai Gurkus, Koidwig Genad Lethal Cymru at Show dot Cymru. Koidwig Genad Lethal Cymru at Show dot Cymru. Right, now we're going to I'm still on coffee back in the Let's stop for a quick tea or coffee. Now I'm going to give you five minutes. Okay, it was supposed to be 10 minutes, but we're going to give you five if you don't mind. After the break, we'll be going into part two of the session. It's your opportunity to have your say, of course. So during the break, you'll be able to watch some more films. We'll be in the week, starting with a special film by Griffith Jones, Casting at a Wedding, People's Collection Wales. So let's see you back in five minutes, if we may. So that is, well, let's say just after five past 11. Okay, so Pimini de Chmorel. Okay, right. Chris and Olchi. Um, yeah, fell my mama David the one who can eat doy on in a mau heat in the meadow. Right, after Holly Ak Ateb, this is the third, the final part of this session today. As I said, we've only got 15 minutes. Um, it's the, this today is the first of six sessions, of course. We've had some lively discussions, some great comments and opinion. Now it's time to hopefully ask your taxing questions. Use the QA, okay, as much as you can at the bottom of the screen there, hopefully. We've already met our panel, of course, very briefly. So if it's okay with all four of you, um, can I ask you to quickly again, very quickly introduce yourselves again, just in case somebody didn't see uh, you this morning. We've got Erica, Maria, Vicky and Chris. So Erica, over to you first. Could you just quickly introduce yourself? Erica Dawson-Davis, National Forest Program Manager for Welsh Government. Okay, good. Thank you. Vicky? Uh, Vicky Martin, Head of Vista Attraction Strategy for Welsh Water. Thank you. Chris? Uh, Chris Hoyle, I'm the Environmental Grants Program Manager for the National Heritage Fund. Thank you. And Maria, Maria Stroke Liz, are you both together or is it just Maria? Uh, Liz is here. Um, yeah, so I am um, Maria Wilding. I'm the Program Manager for Slice School, the Community Wooden Air for Wales. And Liz Much, who's also here, is our New Wales Development Officer. Yeah, thank you. And she called herself Cuckoo, didn't she? Liz the Cuckoo, I like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, okay then, well, um, please use the Q&A as much as you can. Let me put that on right now. Uh, we do have uh, a couple of uh, sort of questions that we've already sent in, as it were, but again, please don't be shy. Use the Q&A, use hand ready. If you want to actually ask the question yourself, then by all means do so, that's fine, no problem, I can come to you, but I can ask it on your behalf as well. So use the Q&A as much as you can. So can I come to first of all, and let's go straight to Erica, um, because you are the head of, obviously. Um, is the Welsh Government planning to plant more trees, stroke improve tree coverage as part of the National Forest for Wales? So it's a fairly obvious question, but, but uh, no, the answer. No, no, no. Um, absolutely. The, the National Forest will encompass existing woodland and new woodland. So it's... Um, it really is making those connections across Wales and looking at what we've already got, as we've already spoken about a lot today, um, and creating new woodlands as well. So, okay, good. Okay, um, I, I'm going into the the chat, but and somebody sent me a question. Uh, if you know my okay, how? Oh, now then, that's a good question. We we talked a lot about tourism. Um, how do we avoid all our forests? becoming like centre parks, or worse, Alton Towers, like an Alton Towers-esque experience. Overuse and development is a problem that should be considered, obviously. So who would like to tackle that massive question? Let's go to Erica again and quickly. I'll, I'll, I'll cut you out. Um, as I kind of outlined in my presentation, we're looking now at how we uh, look at those six outcomes and how we look at how we represent those in the National Forest. So we're not saying all forests should be the same. Uh, we're not saying all woodlands should be the same. Um, it needs to be a blended approach and it needs to be place-based. Um, so I think that's um, one way of yeah. looking yeah. at it. It's a, it's a blended approach. Across because that's obviously a, a big concern, isn't it? With the, uh, you know, it's all well getting able to go to forest, but the last thing you want, with all respect to Sand Parks and Northern Towers, is, 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 is to have an old towers in, in our forest. So, um, Neris, Lloyd, Pierce, uh, Island Carnage, and mature trees are constantly being filled by developers. Uh, what would be done to protect the mature woods we already have? Um, new planting has to go hand in hand with protection of existing trees, especially in urban areas. Now, now, we've talked a lot about the rural areas, obviously, but let's talk about the urban areas. Maybe, um, Vicky, can, can you contribute to this one here? 
Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, something that we've been doing at Lisbon and Clinician as part of um, the project that we've got there is we, we started off with um, sort of a health and safety survey, condition survey of trees to, to understand the condition of the trees. Um, and once we understood the condition of the trees, um, we were then able to um, make safe any trees that are dangerous, um, remove any trees that are diseased that need to come out. There, there is a problem with um, certain species like ash dieback, but more importantly, it then allows us to understand what opportunities there are for replanting. And I can pick up on something that we said earlier on, it's about having the right trees in the right places um, for the, the local environment. So we, we are developing um, through the Community Woodland Project at the Spain Clinician Woodland Management Plan, which will take us over the next few years. Um, and as we start taking out invasive species in particular, so the health and safety works have been done. Here, um, the next step will be to start taking out invasive species. As we start removing the invasive species, that will then create those opportunities to actually plant new trees in. Um, so we're taking them, uh, that's the approach that we're taking at this Benning Clinician. Okay. Now, um, while we're talking of clinician, if you don't mind, then Vicky, um, stay with me. Uh, Paul Davis, I'm involved with the clinician and Liz Vein Reservoir Friends Group. Could I have an update, please? Yeah, I'd love to give you an update. Um, we are, um, we had, I think as I mentioned before, over 130 people express an interest in joining the Friends. And when we asked people to, um, to sort of sign up to join, we asked them what their interests were. And there were a number of people that were interested in getting involved in the governance. So there's been a governance group that's been a volunteers that have been meeting uh, to develop the constitution. And the group themselves are in the process of, of constituting at the moment. So we're very hopeful that um, that should be going through in the next few weeks which would mean that there would then be opportunities, hopefully COVID willing, to actually start organising activities so that um, people can actually start getting involved in preparing the site for the opening. Um, and as I said, there's a woodland management plan, which is in development at the moment, which will then guide the work that we do over the next few years, not just in preparation for opening, but into the future as well, once the site's open to the public. Good. Right. Thank you, Vicky. Um, talk about COVID. Actually, I'm going to come to Maria, who's got a hand up uh, in a sec, Maria, if you don't mind, um, and Liz. But COVID, somebody is asking, coming out of COVID, I'm going to go to Chris for this one. Coming out of COVID, we're left with even a bigger national debt. Is there a danger of this falling down the agenda as issues such as education, health and housing compete for funds? Uh, Chris, you're our finance man this morning, so would you like to contribute to one there? I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer that question, to be honest. Okay, fair enough. Um, Eric, Eric can, can I come to you? Is there a danger of uh, the, the sort of um, the national debt, if like, being ignored? I think we need to, that, that question is um, obviously quite pertinent at the moment. I think we need to look in the round and look at everything that's happening with the green recovery um, and looking at ways in which uh, nature and nature-based solutions can help us um, coming out of of COVID as well as um, the climate emergencies and the, and the nature crisis. You know, it's a, I think it's, again, I use the word blended again, but I don't see that things are falling down agendas. It's uh, it's how we use everything to its best um, ability. And, sure. and I think okay, no, that's no, thank you. Um, Maria or Liz, uh, you are your hand up. Uh, yeah, it's Liz. Uh, it's Liz, Chris, thank you. Uh, it was responding to the earlier question about um, threats to woodlands and woodland sites in Cardiff. And, and I suppose we've asked our development officers are supporting some um, small community organisations and individuals across Cardiff who were looking at some of the areas that are um, designated for felling. And I suppose what I would what I would like to say is a as a catch-all really is that um, Clysagoy would do support the development of community groups and that's one way where your voice is heard because you, we can share our, um, our other members experiences and campaigning so if you contact us we, we will certainly have a look at 
I look at your individual um, particular story, but a lot of it is to do with planning, which I think was mentioned in the earlier session. Um, and there is definitely a pull between planning and the, the, obviously the deficit within councils and the ecology department. So it is a, it's a diplomatic aim. And if we can push the, um, the, the, the preservation of community woodlands up the agenda for the people of Wales, then that's only a positive thing. Thanks, okay. Chris. Cool. Well, st stay with me. I think somebody else has asked the question that might be pertinent to you. I'm not sure if you can answer this. Uh, Robert, would it be useful to introduce nut and fruit trees for human consumption in this national forest plan? That's an interesting point. Um, I think that that is actually happening. That was alluded to in, in um, I think Chris was talking about it, or Erica, about the tiny forests that Keep Wales Tidy are, um, have had funding to set up across Wales. Also, um, personally, I'm working with two sites in Lachlith who are developing food forests across their towns. And I think it is definitely something that is already taking place across community woodlands with orchards and tiny, tiny food forests. And also forest gardens, which are incredibly popular. So we have several um, members at the forest gardens and we would happily share that information with anyone that wants to know. Okay, good. Uh, we have a question in the chat uh, from Gron and Gwraig. Always come off Argyfer. Is the support, um, I'm not quite sure who to go to, maybe Erica or Vicky, or I'm not sure, is the support for private owners of ancient trees and forests? Can I answer that one? I'll answer that. Yes, Erica, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the scheme that the First Minister announced in his key speak is, is looking at both private and public woodland and community woodland. So, um, when more detail of that will be available over the coming months, um, and we're, as I said, this this isn't uh, prescriptive. In it just goes this way, it goes this way. We're looking at a blended approach across the national forest, so very much um, private ownership is very very important as well as well as um, the sector. The sector okay. Sector. Uh, again, I'm conscious of time. Well, we've got time for two more questions. I'm going to come to Maria next, and then Erica. I'm going to finish off with you. Okay. Um, so Maria, somebody has asked with connected national forests, there are opportunities for good and negative flow of species nationwide. What's the national strategy regarding INS? Invasive next species, I think you are. Square, right, okay. <laughs> um, okay, well that's that that's a big one. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and make it short. Okay. And um there are several projects and several people looking at this, and there is um, legislation to stop the um, spread of invasive non-natives by NNS. Um, but I think it is something that does need some more work. And I know there is a, um, a Welsh government funded project looking at it at the moment on, in small areas, um, looking at eradicating from catchment areas, because with INNS, invasive non-natives, they spread um, in different ways. So it needs to be looked at. And it's been into our old management plan for new woodlands as well as existing woodlands um, as we manage that and how, and, and it, it has an impact on where you get your stock from. If you're bringing stock, if you're planting trees, it needs to be um, from notified stock that, that you know is, isn't bringing anything untoward or unwanted into your woodlands. So yeah, it needs careful planning and management and it's something that will need to be um, more aware, I think, going forward as we plan and plant new woodlands. Okay, that's fine. Thank you very, very much. Um, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Liz, uh, Chris and Mickey. Erica, I'm going to finish off with you, if you don't mind. Basically, we're doing these sessions over the next three days. But what is the actual next stage, if you like, for, for the National Forest of Wales? What, what, what is the next stage after, after we've done these sessions? What happens then? The next stage is the consultation, which will be, well, obviously we've got the scheme will be um, announced over, over the summer, um, open over the summer, but we've got a consultation coming up in the winter, which we would love everybody to contribute to. The, the discussion today has been absolutely fantastic, um, and this is, we need more of this. There'll be more opportunities, and there'll be more discussion happening um, as we go forward over this next year. Um, and working towards the winter where we're looking to, to do a more formal discussion and consultation. Good. Thank you very, very much. Okay, well, um, then I'll do the session. Then I'm here. I'm bored. I think you'll agree. It's been a, a lively start to this three day consultation. Um, my key moment was basically um, the description of the squirrels going from tree to tree to tree without actually the road. Wonderful image. Okay, so let me quickly remind you of the other sessions that we have for you today. This afternoon, 
in half an hour, there's the informal networking workshop facilitated by Glenda. And at 6 p.m. tonight, then the second of the sessions with myself, this time we'll be focusing on the environment benefit and the environmental benefits of the national forest. So please, if you can't join us tomorrow, Avori, the session starting in the morning will be the first of two sessions looking at the economic benefits, trees and the economy. If you're not sure of the times and the sessions, please just go back to the wonderful event box platform, which has worked incredibly well today, I have to add. Go to the main page and all the information is there. So register as soon as you can if you haven't already done so. Kenny the Vint, Ian Chware, Vidjobach, Ganva Hain, friend Yolo Williams. Stay with us just for a few more minutes. We're going to play you um, a couple of videos, one in Welsh, one in English, by my, my old mucker, Yolo Williams. So let's play those first of all. And I'm going to go to the same week. Well, Ian, good and natter, man, on the higher end night. Then he's in the team law, and he's in the cargoth, and then he's in the cargoth. Yn gysylltiedig gan gwreiddiau Celtaidd a chwedlau o'r Mabinogi. Mae coedwigoedd yn cyfoethogi ein bywydau mewn cymaint o ffyrdd. Fydd coedwig genedlaethol Cymru yn cysylltu ein coetiroedd hynafol a newydd yn dod â diwylliant ein gorffennol a'n presennol i fywyd i ddathlu Cymru fel gwlad wedi ei chyfoethogi gan ein coetiroedd. Dim planu coedwig ydy'r cynllun, ond planu syniad a'i wylio'n tyfu dros genedlaethau. Mae o'n syniad fydd yn siapio ein gwytnwch fel cenedl yn y dyfodol, yn creu cryfder drwy gydbwysedd ac yn dylanwadu ein hamgylchedd, ein cynefin a'n bywydau, yn ddiwylliannol, yn economaidd ac yn gynaliadwy. Yn cynhyrchu ffyniant masnachol trwy greu ymwelwyr, diwydiant a swyddi. Byddwn yn adfer, gwella a chreu coetiroedd a chynefinoedd mewn ffordd gysylltiedig ar hyd a lled Cymru. Wrth gymryd yr agwedd y goeden iawn yn y lle iawn, ochor yn ochor a safonau a chanllawiau coedwigaeth y deyrna synedig, bydd ein coedwig genedlaethol yn sefydlu tirweddau a chynefinoedd cryf, cynaliadwy, wedi gwreiddio'n gadarn i ymddiffyn ein gwlad mewn nifer a ffyrdd o effeithiau newid yr hinsawdd i lifogydd. Mae ein coedwig genedlaethol yn ymwneud â mwy na choed yn unig. Mae'n ymwneud â chwarae rhan mewn tyfu a rhannu Cymru mewn dyfodol sy'n ddiw ac yn ffynu am genedlaethau i ddod. Eich coedwig genedlaethol chi ydy hon. Byddwch yn rhan o honi. something magical about forests. At one with nature, they're good for our soul. We feel not alone, not lost, but connected. Connected to our Celtic past and tales from the Mabinogion. Forests enrich our lives in so many ways. The National Forest for Wales will connect our ancient and the woodlands, bringing our past and present culture to life, celebrating Wales as a land enriched by our woodlands. The plan isn't simply to plant a forest, it's to plant an idea and watch it grow for generations. It's an idea that will shape our future resilience as a nation, creating strength through balance and influencing our environment, our habitats and our lives, culturally, economically and sustainably. It will generate commercial prosperity by creating visitors, industry and jobs. We will restore, enhance and create woodlands and habitats in a connected way across the length and breadth of Wales. Taking a right tree, right place approach alongside UK forestry standards and guidelines, our national forest will establish strong, sustainable landscapes and habitats, firmly rooted to protect our country in a number of ways from climate change effects to flooding. Our national forest is about more than just trees. It's about playing a part in growing and sharing a future Wales that's alive and thriving for generations to come. 
This is your national forest. Be part of it. Great to come on Yolo. So thanks to you all again. See you at uh, 6 p.m. this evening if you are joining us. Uh, and of course, enjoy the networking session at one o'clock with Glendiver. Hidiochamariaun, ichigid amatro. Well, who's that?